Today, I'm going to break my one rule. That's right. I'm doing a mock draft. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where on Fridays throughout the offseason, except for this Friday, I'm here on the show answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions, either at me or DM me to get those questions into me for next Friday's edition of the weekly Friday mailbag right here on Locked on Panthers. Today's episode of Locked on Panthers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Today on the show, I'm going to do something I've never done before. For the first time in at least my history of hosting Locked on Panthers, I am going to provide you a seven-round mock draft. That's right. Julian Council, the man who doesn't really love the whole mock draft, NFL draft process, as far as that one goes, he's going to do a mock draft. So, yes, me here, Julian Council speaking the third person. I'm going to do a mock draft on the show. Why? I had a listener ask me to do it last week. I honestly had contemplated doing it. Bleach Report, if you've ever checked me out on their live streams, they've had me do mock drafts in – the past and they're actually kind of fun especially when i'm able to share my screen now because this is a podcast that happens to be on youtube not a youtube show but a podcast that happens to be broadcast on youtube i'm not going to be sharing my screen and doing a live mock draft with you so you can see all the picks and then suggest what picks i should make i already went out ahead and did it on pff's mock draft simulator another reason why i was compelled to do this the ultimate mock draft that we did here at locked on i took keon coleman 33rd, honestly, because I like Keon Coleman, and I spent two total seconds thinking about what pick to select. That was a pick made on March 21st, y'all. Just to take you behind the curtains on how long it takes before these things are truly even out there for the public. So on March 21st at 10 p.m. on a Thursday night, I was asked to make this pick. I didn't even know I was making a pick. I didn't think the Panthers were going to be making a selection because they're not in the first round. Typically, it's only the first round that we do. But apparently, I had to make a pick, and I just said, Keon Coleman. And because of that, I get held to that pick. And this is the thing about the ultimate mock draft. It seems like every year the Panthers are picking at this important time. I make a pick over a month before the draft, and I change my mind. And people are like, oh, this is who you want. So, yeah, sure, I would love to have Keon Coleman. I think he's a good player. Is that the pick I necessarily think they should make, depending on what the board looks like? Maybe, maybe not. And that's the big thing to understand about this whole mock draft process. Is that the guy who I want at 33? No, not necessarily. I'd love to have A.D. Mitchell at 33, but is he going to be there at 33? Probably not. But if he is, that would be my pick. But in the scenario that we had, that was not my pick. So here I am giving you another opportunity to criticize me for what picks I select by doing this mock trap. So I have it set to PFF's big board, and I didn't want to have any randomness. I did do one simulator where they had J.J. McCarthy going to the 49ers, which is ridiculous and would never happen. So without further ado, without me sitting here and basically stalling, here is my seven-round mock draft on Locked on Panthers. Okay, so looking at round two, pick 33. I said on yesterday's show, and I have been adamant about wide receiver needs to be the pick there at 33. Now, that is all dependent upon how the board falls to the Carolina Panthers. There are players like Xavier Leggett, who I believe will be there at 33, but will he be the top player on their board? And that's important to understand. The Panthers are going to react to what happens in the 32 picks before them on Thursday night. And then once they get to Friday evening at 33, they're going to look at their board and they're going to choose who they feel 
feel like is the best fit for them. It may be positionally, but what they said last week, they being Dave Canales and Dan Morgan, the new brain trust here in Carolina, is that they want to be able to go best player available, and they feel like coming out of free agency, they've been set up to do that. So with that in mind, looking at what the board gave me, Marvin Harrison Jr., he went third overall to the Patriots. Malik Neighbors went fourth overall to the Cardinals. Roman Dunze went fifth overall to the Chargers. Three results that are not all that surprising other than Marvin Harrison going to the Patriots, not Jaden Daniels or Drake May. A.D. Mitchell, who I would love to be there at 33, he went 22nd to the Philadelphia Eagles. Brian Thomas out of LSU went 27 to the Cardinals. So they go double dip there on this mock draft. Troy Franklin out of Oregon went 28 to the Bills. Ladd McConkey, a very popular pick by many draft experts. And reporters out there, he went 30th to the Ravens. That's seven first-round wide receivers, which is a possibility and would be a bad scenario for the Carolina Panthers. Is it a nightmare scenario if that's how it works out on Friday? You may think so. I don't know if that is the case because this is such a deep draft. But to see Ladd gone, to see A.D. Mitchell gone, which is not surprising, A.D. Mitchell part of it, but really the Ladd McConkey part of it, that's disappointing. Now, if it was eight where Kansas City took a receiver at 32, then, yeah, that may be a nightmare scenario for the Panthers. Looking at the top five that were available to me as far as players, that's Zach Frazier, center out of West Virginia, Mike Sandersville, a nickel corner out of Michigan, Bo Nix, quarterback out of Oregon, Michael Penix Jr., quarterback out of Washington, Jordan Morgan, a tackle out of Arizona. Other players who were available, Adisa Isaac and Chop Robinson, two edge rushers out of Penn State. And in looking at wide receiver, in this order, Keon Coleman, Roman Wilson, Ricky Pearsall, Jalen Polk, and Xavier Leggett. That's how PFF has their big board. Those are the top available wide receivers. So Keon Coleman, the guy who I took in the ultimate mock draft, was there. But just looking at the fact that the top player available on the board is also a player at a position of need here in Carolina, that being Zach Frazier, my selection put the 33rd overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft was Zach Frazier, center, West Virginia. I don't know how confident I am in the Panthers moving Austin Corbett to center after back-to-back -back knee surgeries and him not having experience playing that in live game scenario in the NFL. Zach Frazier, though, is someone who is steady at West Virginia, came up with an injury, came back in a bowl game, played well, dominated out the combine. I want someone who has experience playing center. I also want someone who can come in and elevate this offensive line and can be the future at that position. They have tried with Matt Paradis. They tried with Elfline. They tried with Bradley Bozeman. They're now going to try for the time being with Austin Corbett. It's time to stop with the rotation there at center and to get your long-term guy. And with Zach Frazier being the top of the board there, I would think he'd also be the top of the Panthers board. He is who I am going to take there with pick 33 in the second round. Now, looking later on, in the second round, the Panthers trade away Brian Burns. They got a second round pick, pick 39. They also did a pick swap in the fifth round this year and get a fifth rounder next year in 2025. Looking at it, the Panthers, they have some opportunities looking at the guys that are on the board. Now, since I last made my pick, Bo Nix, who the Panthers weren't going to consider, is off the board. Mike Sanders is off the board. Keon Coleman's off the board. And so is Adisa Isaac, the top wide receivers available. According to PFF's top board, is Roman Wilson out of Michigan, Ricky Pearsall out of Florida, Jalen Polk out of Washington, Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina, Malachi Corley out of Western Kentucky, and Xavier Worthy out of Texas. Those are the top guys available. Chopper Robinson and Jatavion Sanders, two players at positions the Panthers could target also there on the board. For me, though, I feel like Carolina needs to be focused on adding more assets to their war chest in the draft and being able to get more players in the top 100. As difficult as it is to pass over Sanders and some of these other players that are on the board, I look at my trade options. My trade options were taking 39 and sending it over to Jacksonville for 48 and 96, or taking 39 and sending it over to the Rams for 52 and 83. 52 and 48, pretty close to each other. 83 and 96, it's a little bit too far, way too far back in the third round for my pleasure so i decided i was going to trade the 39th overall pick to the los angeles rams for pick 52 in the second round and pick 83 they're located in the third round who am i going to take with that second round pick pick 52 i'll get to that here in just a moment on locked on panthers 
You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes guesswork out of buying tickets. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and use code Locked On. That's L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, looking at what I've done so far here on the seven-round mock draft to start off. Round two, pick 33. I want a wide receiver if that's how the board works out for the Panthers. But you have to understand, they feel like they are in position to go best player available. And center is also a big need, in my opinion. I think the team also understands that. And Dave Canales did say that they would love to have someone to come in and compete. Only makes everybody in that room better. Zach Frazier, center out of West Virginia, taking him 33rd overall. Pick 39, though, I'm going to trade it. Trade it to the Rams for 52 and 83. Now back to it with pick 52 there in the second round. And I don't see the Panthers getting out of the second round without getting a wide receiver. And in this scenario, I don't feel comfortable not getting a wide receiver. Now, unfortunately, since trading away that pick, pick 39, Roman Wilson, Jalen Polk, and Xavier Leggett, who went on a podcast uh, and apparently said the Panthers told him that if he's sitting there, that he's their guy. All three of those players have gone off the board. But the good thing is Malachi Corley out of West Virginia, Western Kentucky, rather big difference. Xavier Worthy out of Texas, two players the Panthers have met with in their top 30 visits. Those two guys are on the board. So is Jermaine Burton out of Alabama who played with Bryce Young. And there's been fans out there who've said to me, why don't they get a player from Alabama to come out here and help Bryce? Because Jermaine Burton's not all that good. Tez Walker out of North Carolina. He is also available, a homecoming there. Potentially, I want a wide receiver in a situation. And I decided that while the board was telling me I could wait till the third round, pick 65, I don't feel comfortable doing that. I don't think the Panthers, if they indeed decide to not go wide receiver, at 33. And if they do trade back as far as 52, I don't think they'd feel comfortable not taking one. And I'm sure they're probably going to take a wide receiver 33. And it depends on how the board works out. And then 39, they may stay there there too. But I've been told that that's one of the most tradable value at tradable assets every year. And I would expect to trade back if it's going to happen to be at 39. So for me, I got to get a wide receiver here. And I'm going to take Xavier Worthy, wide receiver out of Texas. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know anything about Malachi Corley other than he played at Western Kentucky. I know the Panthers met with him. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know who this guy is. But I do know that Xavier Worthy is someone the Panthers definitely have their eye on. And of the five guys that we discussed, him, Leggett, Coleman, um, Mitchell, and McConkey, like he, he's one of the five that I've been told and I believe will end up being in Carolina so I'm taking Xavier Worthy. He's put up numbers at Texas. He might be a little slight of frame, certainly, and I have my questions about that. He's had his drop issues in the past, but he did make a lot of plays this past year at Texas and in his three years at the University of Texas, and he is somebody that has speed. The Panthers need speed. They need playmakers, and Xavier Worthy can be that. And with this coaching staff, there is a lot of guys – like Brad Idzik, who's the OC, like Nate Carroll, who's coming over, and some other play, other coaches on this offensive staff that have worked with wide receivers, you have to think that whatever young wide receiver comes in is going to be groomed the right way, is going to have an opportunity to come in and immediately make an impact. And they think of Xavier Worthy, of those guys listed above, not knowing a lot about Malachi Corley, is the one in this scenario that the Panthers would take and is someone who can potentially help them out. Just because I may not be a massive fan of this player, and you may be or you may not be, doesn't mean that players are going to come in and play well. Again, this is a mock draft. This is supposed to be a fun exercise. Let's not take it way too seriously. As again, I spent like two total seconds thinking about my Keon Coleman pick when doing the ultimate mock draft back on March 21st at 10 p.m. on a Thursday when I was asked. Moving on to the beginning of round three, pick 65. The Panthers have a wide receiver to this point. They have a center, two spots that I would absolutely love to be addressed to start off the second round. If they stay at 33, they stay at 39, wide receiver, center, center, wide receiver. I'm happy if that's the two groups that they decided to go after. But after that, I feel like the Panthers are going to need to get a corner. 
and depends on what the board looks like. That's important to understand. Depends on how the board looks when the beginning of round three starts. Looking at the board that I had, the top available player and all of them were corners. And the guy that I looked at was Andrew Phillips, cornerback out of Kentucky. I have seen him mocked Carolina before. He is someone who would come in and play nickel so he can compete with Troy Hill, potentially take over that role. Now, if does if this does happen, knowing that Dan Morgan said last week the Panthers are going to come back to the Stephon Gilmore negotiation after the draft, that is a move that you have to make if the Panthers decide, all right, we're going to go with a nickel. And it's supposedly a good nickel corner draft. Maybe not the best as far as after the first round outside corners. A lot of the guys that we've talked about on the show over the last couple of weeks that could fit a role here in Carolina, like an Ennis Rakestra, um, Andrew Phillips, who talked about Max Melton out of Rutgers. They are more so slot guys who maybe can play outside. Andrew Phillips fits that role. Tough run stopper, physical corner. He's somebody the Panthers could really build around there. Not really build around, but have in their their secondary for a while as a nickel guy, at least the next four years. He's the person I'm going to take. He was a top available player. So Andrew Phillips, corner Kentucky with a 65th overall pick. The Panthers have another pick in the top 100. Thanks to me trading with the Rams. Looking at it, round three, pick 83. And how the board fell, it was a lot of running backs, y'all. And I don't think running back is really the pick here, just based off of looking at the board and what the Panthers need. Like, just looking at needs, running back is not the top need for this team. But playmaker, that is a need. And Dan Morgan has said, offensively, defensively, we need playmakers. And I think long-term at running back, okay, Chuba's going to get an opportunity this year to be the guy. And then you look also at Miles Sanders. They could get rid of him if they wanted to. Right now, it seems like they want to keep him around. And that could be dependent upon what they decide to do on draft night on Friday and then on Saturday afternoon up in Detroit. Just the way the board fell to me, I thought about trading again because I didn't want to go running back. But I do think in this scenario... This guy is someone who can help him in the run game and in the pass game. It can be more than just a runner and just a plain running back. And that guy is Bucky Irving running back out of Oregon. He's a dude, man. If you watch Bucky the last two years at Oregon, he was outstanding, really helped out Bo Nix in the pass game, but also right there behind him in the shotgun or next to him in the shotgun, however you want to look at it. He was a really good player for the Oregon Ducks. And I we've already had our Oregon running back here in Carolina and Jonathan Stewart. Now, you know Jay Stu, if he has any say at all, which he doesn't and really shouldn't, he would be all over Bucky Irving coming to Carolina. Not the biggest runner, but a tough runner. Someone who's able to break tackles, who has great speed, again, can help in the pass game. Playmakers, 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 playmakers is what – we're focused on offensively and defensively. And the way things played out for me, Bucky Irving running back out of Oregon was the pick. And I wouldn't hate it at all, knowing they can come and help you this year, could be in a return game. Now the kickoff returns is back to being a very important asset for teams. And Xavier look at the Panthers do take him. He can help them out in kick return as well. Bucky Irving could do that. Bucky Irving, that's the pick for me. So round two, pick 52, Xavier Worthy, wide receiver, Texas. Round three, pick 65, Andrew Phillips, corner out of Kentucky. Round three, pick 83, Bucky Irving, running back out of Oregon. So there are the first five picks. Panthers have four more picks right here on my mock draft. 101, 141, 142, and 240. What am I going to do? Well, just stay tuned and find out here on Locked on Panthers. This next segment is brought to us by our sponsor, BetterHelp. What's the first thing you do if you had an extra hour in your day? A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, get BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just build a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. 
It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. It's $150. Win or lose. So if your favorite team in the NBA playoffs or in the hunt for Lord Stanley's Cup loses, you still get $150 of bonus bets. Guaranteed win or lose. So if they lose, you can feel good. If they win, you can feel even better. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for, y'all? Visit fandle.com says locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Fandle, America's number one sports book. In an effort to not be held to a pick I made over a month ago, I am here giving you the first ever, at least with me, hosting Locked on Panthers seven-round mock draft. It's a fun way to do a show, to try and mix things up, and I don't know, it gives you another opportunity to criticize me for some of the selections I make. And remember, it's a fun exercise. I don't make the picks for the Panthers. I have opinions of what I think they should do. And some of the pinches I have so far haven't really played out based off of the mock draft that I have so far on the this show. Zach Frazier, center of West Virginia's pick 33, the wide receivers that are available. There's certainly ones the Panthers would think about getting. I just looked at what the board, and this is on PFF, their big board, doesn't like. They don't, they don't really like Xavier Leggett. They don't really like Keon Cole all that much. As much. They don't like him as much as the other guys that went in the first round, like A.D. Mitchell and Troy Franklin and Lab McConkey. And McConkey is someone we talked about a lot. And, could be a Panther. I, I predicted on Monday's show that he'll actually end up being a Kansas City Chief. I'm surprised that this mock draft didn't have the Chiefs taking wide receiver. But again, it's a mock draft. It's a simulator. It's a computer. It, it, it's not necessarily how things are going to play out. Maybe this is how things are going to play out. But Zach Frazier, round two, pick 33. He is the Panther center of the future. Traded pick 39. Would have loved to take a receiver there, but got to get more assets because this is a rebuild. Xavier Worthy pick 52 there in the second round. Pick 30. Pick 65, rather, in the third round. Andrew Phillips, corner out of Kentucky. And then the last pick I took was Bucky Irving, running back out of Oregon. Don't think running back is necessarily a need for the Panthers, but they could go out and get a new guy. And they need young players on cost control contracts who can help them in the future. And I think Bucky Irving can help them now and later. I'm a fan of Bucky Irving if they want to take a running back, especially if the board falls to where all the top available players are running backs. Maybe you trade back instead. But I decided I didn't have time for that. Okay, looking at the final four picks the Panthers have, and I have here on this box draft, they're on day three. Starting off, pick 101. The Panthers, so far in this box draft, have addressed center. They have Zach, Zach Frazier, wide receiver, and got corner. Those are the three big needs I look at. The other one is tight end. The Panthers have not addressed it at all this offseason. Not to say they didn't try. Dan Morgan pointed out last week that they were certainly interested and some reagents. There's a lot of teams are also interested in some of the players that they wanted to bring here, not in the players that they did bring here to Carolina. But starting off round four, especially looking at how the tight end group is, it's Brock Bowers, it's Jatavion Sanders in the second round or third round. And after that, it's a bunch of really day three guys, not maybe the best tight end class in the world that we've had in the NFL. I think that you don't touch anyone if you don't get Sanders. I don't think you touch anyone until the start of day four or day three, rather, in round four. And the guy that I was looking at, Kate Silver, tight end out of Ohio State, him and Ben Sennett are the top two available, at least were the top two available when doing my mock draft, Ben Sennett out of Kansas State. Kate Silver, though, really good tight end. He and Eric Hall had already gone off the board from Iowa, started off his career at Michigan. I think Kate Silver is someone who can come in and help out in the passing game, but also is a really good run blocker and more of just that traditional tight end. Is he – Going to end up being like a Dalton Schultz, potentially, maybe better run blocker than Hayden Hurst has been in his career, better run blocker than Mike Kosicki has been, comes from a high powered Ohio State offense. I like him to come in, be someone who can help out immediately as a run blocker, but also already has the talent, has already shown that he can be a pass catcher as well as he develops with Tommy Trimble. They need someone else to bounce off to have a pairing with Trimble for the foreseeable future. And I would like to see Trimble back here after the season in Carolina. So there is my fourth round pick, pick 101, Kate Sober, tight end out of Ohio State. Excuse me, the Ohio State University. Round five, Panthers have picks 141 and 142 back to back, which meant once I got to this point, I could choose whoever the hell I wanted and not really be afraid of them going away. Now, the first player I looked at was Leonard Taylor, defensive lineman out of Miami. 
but then looked at there's a player who was ranked ahead of him and at a position where the Panthers could also be interested in taking a player at that position. And by the way, this position is linebacker. And one player we talked about, Peyton Wilson, win the first round in this mock draft. Will that happen in real life? I guess we'll find out on Thursday. But the player I took, round five, pick one of 141, was Maris Liafro, linebacker out of Notre Dame. This is his breakdown from PFF. Liafro is a powerful Downhill linebacker who attacks ball carriers and blockers with bad intentions. His instincts and feel for spot zone coverage still need work if he is to be relied upon and consistently. He is projected as a contributing inside linebacker for either 4-3 or 3-4 defense. The Panthers, they can run a 3-4, which is their base. They can also run 4-3. And getting someone like Liafo in Dublin special team, but also to be a backup and contributor at linebacker, I think that makes sense. The Panthers should still, next offseason, when Shaq Thompson likely departs, look for other options. But as far as this year, not bad to go get someone from Notre Dame defense. It always is good. So with him off the board, I could take another player who I really liked. And honestly, had I not had pick 142 right after pick 141, I may have taken him instead. And that player is Leonard Taylor, defensive lineman out of Miami. You look at the Panthers' defensive line. Outside of Derrick Brown last year, it was pretty damn bad. Shy Tuttle likely was last year in Carolina. He was no good. He needs to step up big time this year. They brought in A. Sean Robinson to be more of a run blocker. And then you have Nick Thurman back, LeBron Ray back. You also have um, – can't remember his name at this point in time. You have some younger guys who showed some promise, but are they going to develop into starters? I don't know. The Panthers need to be better in the trenches, and I don't think it's a bad idea to go back to the trenches and the draft. You've done it well in the offensive line in free agency, adding Damian Lewis and Robert Hunt and Josh Nyman, who's going to be your swing tackle. That now puts guys like Brady Christensen as backups. Cade Mays, Chandler Zavala are also back, already backups, but now they're experienced backups. The depth is in a better spot on the offensive line. Depth-wise, defensive line, some serious questions there. So that's why I wanted to get Leonard Taylor, defensive lineman, out of Miami. This is the blurb written on him. When Taylor is on, he possesses the power and explosive athletic ability to be an impact player. We don't see that enough, though. He is a young, hot and cold interior defensive lineman and a talent worth drafting in the top 10, in the top 100 to develop. So they think that he could be drafted top 100 and he has that kind of talent, just needs to be developed. And he'll get an opportunity to be developed with Todd Wash in this defense. And he's someone who could be an interior pass rusher for the Panthers down the road. That's not what Derek Brown is going to be, but they can find someone else who could be that. That is good news for Carolina. So Leonard Taylor, defensive lineman out of Miami. I've taken him with pick 142. Round seven, pick 240. <laughs> at this point in time, weren't a lot of players that I was looking at thinking, yeah, that's who the Panthers should get. If I hadn't taken a running back early on, I suppose I probably would have just taken a late round flyer on a back. But looking at special teams and how Eddie Pinero played last year was a little up and down. Wasn't as good as he was the year prior missed a couple of field goals. He had, he made 94% of his kicks in 2022 and he had that record missing no kicks. And he had, of course, the record in even this year uh, before that was broken. He only made 86% of his kicks this past season, only 85% of his extra points. The 86% percent was the second worst of his career the 85 percent extra points was the worst of his career so three missed extra points and then he had four missed field goals in total not a lot not too bad but i wonder would it make sense for the panthers just to bring in some competition the last time Panthers brought in some competition was harrison butker he did not win the job graham gano won the job fans are still upset about that having revisionist history that was panthers team that was going to a season where they felt like they were going to be contenders. They already had a good kicker in Graham Gano, and Graham was healthy. They weren't going to put it on a rookie kicker's leg to go out there and win them games. So Bucker, things have worked out for him. He has Super Bowl rings. Would not have those in Carolina. And really, I feel like Matt, like Ron Rivera, Matt Rule, Matt Rule really blew that scenario where Graham went on the Gi the Giants under the Gettleman and had had a really good career, and he's been healthy. Wasn't healthy in Carolina's last couple seasons. When he's healthy, one of the best kickers in the league. So just a Remind y'all who love to do the revisionist history thing on Harrison Bucker, Graham Gano. With that being said, I'm taking a kicker. And the kicker I am taking is Will Riker, kicker out of Alabama, the all-time leading scorer for the Crimson Tide down there in Tuscaloosa. And what are my thoughts here? Why the hell not? It's a seventh-round pick. This guy is going to be someone who either doesn't make the roster, is a practice squad guy, or 
actually could contribute as a kicker if he wins the battle with Eddie Pinheiro. Competition is a good thing. Dave Canales talked about last year, last week, bringing in competition at all spots. They have no competition at kicker right now. And their kicker didn't have the best year last season. I don't think that this is that big of a deal. You've already picked up another pick in the top 100. By doing the trade I did at pick 39, if you get to pick 240, why not bring in a kicker and bring in some competition for Eddie Pinheiro? And if you push him, that's good. If he loses a job and Riker wins it, then you have your kicker of the future. I don't see that as being a bad scenario at all. So that is my seven-round mock draft here on Locked on Panthers. Feel free to comment, to chastise, to praise if you're compelled to. I felt like, why not? Someone asked me last week to do it, and it's been a long time since I made the Keon Coleman pick, and I still like Keon Coleman and still would not be upset if they take him at 33. Now, if that's if the board is what it looked like today, that would not be my decision. The board is different. We're McConkey. Who got, I guess he was available when I made the pick. Again, Thursday night, 10 o'clock. I'm not going to think about it. I'm just, I'm not thinking about who the Panthers are going to take in the draft on a late March Thursday at 10 p.m. When, oh, what was going on that night? The Tar Heels were playing Alabama. So maybe I wasn't really thinking about football when the March Madness was going on. All right, either way, that's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked On Pages podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly, Julian Council. Again, y'all, subscribe and follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where I'll be back with you next Friday. Not this Friday. Draft's going on. But next Friday, answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions. So either at me or DM me, but follow me first on Twitter, at Julian Council, to get those questions into me after the draft. Don't do it before. Do it after the draft, and I'll answer them next Friday. But in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole, as always. Keep pounding, and I'll talk to you all on Wednesday. As Alex Zeitlow, one of the beat reporters here for the Charlotte Observer covering the Carolina Panthers, joins me on the show.